You can call it T dot. The six, Toronto the good. The city of many colors, many flavors, and many identities. We love our ethnic neighborhoods. We love to show off our city. And I don't care what anyone says. We love our sports teams. And yes, that is our mayor taking in the Raptors game with us. We share a common loathing of our never-ending rush hour traffic, but we also share our food stories, experiences, and above all, we lean into our reputation as Canada's center of the universe. This is the tourist guide to Toronto, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about getting around the city, the best spots to visit, and how to best enjoy your time here. So let's dive into it. I think Torontonians are pretty chill. <laughs> Yeah, chiller than your parents. And everyone's very, very polite and very generous. Like you can go up to anyone on the street and ask them how to get somewhere and they'll gladly help you. There's streets of this different ethnicities like Little Italy and like Chinatown and anywhere. Every culture and every different ethnicity has their own little spot in Toronto. If you're one of the thousands of people who fly in Toronto each day, your Toronto adventure will start here at Pearson International Airport. But the YYZ actually isn't in Toronto. It's in the difficult to pronounce suburb of Mississauga, about an hour west of Toronto. So you need to get from Pearson to Toronto's Union Station. You could rent a car and drive in or take a taxi. But Toronto's rush hour lasts from 7 a.m. to about 8 p.m. So if you drive in, you get a lot of this. So save your precious vacation time and take Toronto's Union Pearson Express. It's a train that runs between Pearson Airport and downtown Toronto's Union Station. It's clean, relaxing, has free Wi-Fi, and gets you into downtown Toronto in 25 minutes flat. And this is Union Station. Now you're officially in Toronto. The best way to get around Toronto is walking or taking a, a bus. Because if you take a bus, you can see some views, like great views, arts, different places. I'd say it depends where you're going. If you're able to go somewhere on the subway, like that's yeah. usually pretty good. Yeah, sometimes you want to take the subway in this like Uber the last stretch. If it's summer, you can even take a bike because it's really, really nice to have a bike around Toronto to go to little streets like this one when you have big R street arts, which is really, really wonderful. So there are a lot of ways to get around, but the TTC is my favorite. And the TTC offers the Presto Day Pass, which gets you unlimited rides on the entire TTC network for the entire day. This pass can be bought at the TTC fare vending machines at each subway station. Just tap the card on the reader and off you go. And sure, you could visit the mainstream tourist sites in the city. And I won't stop you if that's what you want to do. But the best way to experience Toronto is by experiencing its awesome neighborhoods. One great neighborhood to start with is Kensington Market. It's small, only about a block and a half, but there's a lot packed in here. Ethnic food from almost every corner of the world. Interesting people and shops of all types, like CXBO Chocolates, whose beautiful, artful chocolates are handcrafted by the Willy Wonka of Toronto, Chef Brandon Olson, and artist filmmaker Sarah Kinlisai. Resist the urge to dive headfirst into the display. And to learn more about this cool neighborhood, I cooked with Chef Sean Adler, the owner at Kensington's Pow Wow Cafe. Okay, so do you want to tell me a little bit more about what an Indian taco is? Absolutely. So this is a, like a traditional Pow Wow food. It's what I grew up eating when I was a kid going to Pow Wows with my family. So this is our fry bread. Most cultures have a bread. Yeah. So like basically the traditional one that we do is like a meat sauce. It's like a, a beef chili. So we just take all sorts of global flavors, but put them on fry bread. This is our special today. We've got a wild rice pilaf. These are our Pow Wow home fries. These are venison meatballs. Everything is made here. We use a lot of indigenously sourced ingredients. A lot of our fish comes from Lake Nipissing First Nation. Like our maple syrup comes from Nyashing Ningming, Cape Croker First Nation. For me, I wanted to be part of this neighborhood because from my door, I can see like so many cultures, right? Have you seen Kensington change a lot in the last couple of years? Kensington is always like in a state of transition and, and change. It's like, it's a, it's a living yeah. city, right? Like people in Kensington tend to want to keep it the same, yeah. but it's never been the same. It was originally the Jewish quarter and then it became like very Portuguese. And now there's like almost like little Japan is popping up, especially on Baldwin. While you're here, be sure to try out Wild Side Soda. It's craft brewed in-house and has soda flavors like cedar and sweet grass. It goes perfect with their tacos. It's no secret that Toronto has a large East Asian population. So naturally, we have a big Chinatown to match. 
and it's right next to Kensington Market. And it's not just home to Chinese Torontonians. You'll find everyone from Vietnamese to Koreans to Japanese out and about in this neighborhood. It's one of the best places for cheap eats, cool street art, people watching, and shopping for random knickknacks. If you're staying at a nearby Airbnb and need some cheap food to cook with, this is the best place to pick up your ingredients at a cheap price. Chinatown Toronto is also the place to explore and get outside of your comfort zone. Curious about the hanging Peking ducks in the window? Go right inside and have a seat. See a dumpling getting stuffed with a mystery filling? Walk right in and order five. And if you like comfort food served in a small hole-in-the-wall type establishment, visit Chinese Traditional Bun for some of the best home-style Chinese dumplings and noodles in the neighborhood. And if you need a new Instagram profile photo, walk south of Chinatown along Spadina for about eight minutes and you'll find Graffiti Alley, Toronto's most Instagrammable neighborhood. Just remember to pose with one leg against the wall, leaning back just a bit, and look to your left. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Now that you've got your new Instagram photo, continue walking down Queen Street and head right into Schnitzel Queen. Here you'll find the best schnitzels in the city because you haven't had a real schnitzel until you've seen Carl Hipsch, our schnitzel master. Okay, so we ordered the Vienna schnitzel, which is honestly the size of my face. It's ginormous. You can either get pork or chicken, and I got the pork one today. You get potato salad and also saffron outside. At almost any time of day, this place is slammed and you'll know exactly why once you have a taste. I really love the schnitzel here because everything is flavored perfectly, every single item on the table. And also, since it's pounded so thinly, it's cooked very evenly, there's no dry bits, um, and it's just nice and juicy throughout the entire schnitzel, which is amazing. It's a warm slice of Czech Republic inside of Toronto, and a hidden gem that Torontonians like to keep secret. So now the secret is out. By the way, Torontonians aren't the type to hide from snowy weather. If you happen to be in the Queen Street area during our blustering winter months, drop by Nathan Phillips Square for outdoor markets and skating. Also, make a stop at the Toronto Christmas Market in the Distillery District. A 50-foot Christmas tree with 800 ornaments and 40,000 lights awaits you. You've got your Christmas treats, warm cocoa, and ice wine all under the beautiful backdrop of this historic district. So it's no surprise that over 600,000 people visit it each year. I've said it once and I'll say it again. The best way to experience Toronto is through its unique neighborhoods. So take a detour away from the downtown core and drop by Sinclair West. It's one of Toronto's oldest districts. Because if you're serious about authentic and local, you need to pass through here. For an interesting perspective on Toronto's ethnic neighborhoods, I sat down with Stephen Hellman, owner of the Foodies Group, at Rio Crown Tigres, Toronto's best Brazilian restaurant. So I saw a really cool tour that you do, like on the streetcar, right? Yes. So what's that all about? How do you yes. do that? We love to incorporate what is local and what is really unique about Toronto into our tours. So we actually started transit-based tours rather than your traditional walking tour, where we get to ride the streetcar and then we do different themed tours around that. So one of our signature ones is the 501 streetcar food tour. And then we do another one called the Best of Toronto tour, where we just kind of choose different neighborhoods that we love. And again, it kind of keeps it fresh and we can really go anywhere in the city and highlight some of the best eats. So do you know a lot about how this area has changed in the last yeah, little bit? It's seen like, you know, drastic evolution. I mean, this pocket specifically from Lansdowne to Dufferin, you know, really used to be Italian. Everything here was a big Italian neighborhood. It was kind of the second evolution of the Italians in Toronto moving from college up here into the St. Clair area. So again, you know, so you kind of still see some of that. Some of like the classic places like Tremati that still exists and Frank's Pizza Shop. Uh, but now you see again, like all the different kind of cultures that have come through that are starting to kind of, you know, open up restaurants and then have a piece of the action here. So if you had to pick like one favorite food destination in Toronto, can you pick one location? Oh, it's so, you know what, it's so tricky. Like, I mean, I live in King West, so like, you know what, it's so convenient and there's so many great places to eat. But you know what, the downtown's becoming more homogenized. Like it's becoming a little more commercial, bigger groups moving in. So it's nice to get to the outskirts, to hit up something like here on St. Clair, like other parts of, you know, even Scarborough, like, you know, other parts of Witchwood, different neighborhoods that still have that mom and pop shop. So if you're looking for a completely unique, eye-opening Toronto food experience during your visit, Steven's your guy. 
And if you head over to Sinclair West Witchwood neighborhood, you'll notice the bright flags and balloons of Dutch Dreams, Toronto's world famous dessert place. The best ice cream, crepes, and waffles in Toronto are freshly made right here. Just listen for the cheery voices of owners Theo and Dina, the Sinclair West originals who have been feeding the neighborhood for 30 years. Even Sporty Spice and Drake have been here, because this is what places like Sinclair West are all about legendary people who blaze a trail to create something amazing in the city. So this is the Dutch pancake with a side of fruit and ice cream. Generations of families actually come here, so that's pretty cool. You know it has to be good if your great-grandparents come here too. Dutch Dreams desserts taste incredible, but let's walk off some of this amazing food. And for that, we have High Park. Admission is free, and the scenery is beautiful. At 400 acres, it's a lot larger than your typical walk in the park, but it's a nice way to escape the madness of the city for just a little bit. For the best experience, visit in the early morning or sunset hours on weekdays, because that's when the park is less busy and the wildlife isn't scared off from the traffic. And once you walk through High Park, hop back onto the streetcar and mark your map for the St. Lawrence Market, recently awarded the best food market in the world. Yes, you heard that right best food market on the planet. You'll find everyone from local office workers to concert growers sharing a table here. And if the locals are eating here, you're in the right place. From seafood to sandwiches to deli meat to desserts, there's no shortage of options here. So take a stroll through the market, order anything that catches your eye, pull up a seat, and enjoy some of the best food in the world, all in one spot. So that's Toronto. You'll find that it's a clean and safe city, even if you're out late. People here are approachable, and Torontonians like to share and show off their city. And they embrace the confusingly large number of cultural identities that make up the patchwork that is Canada's largest city. And don't be surprised if you find yourself cheering for their beloved raptors alongside the mayor. As for myself, I'm going to stay close to where the food is. Comment below and tell me about your experience in Toronto, and which city I should go to next. And of course, subscribe and follow me here at The Joys of Cooking, because there are more food adventures coming up.